Hello everybody, it's Josh from Midlife RC. Um, gonna attempt to put together a step by step of how to drop the motor, there it is, in a Trail Finder 2 to help better your center of gravity. This right here is a ready to run Trail Finder. Uh, bone stock, I've had it since February. And I have done nothing with it yet. It's just been sitting. No battery, never seen a battery, nothing. I've got a shopping cart full of parts behind me that they're going to go into this thing here. But the first thing I wanted to do was drop the motor like I did in my kit. This is my RC four-wheel drive Trail Finder 2 kit. And you can see the difference in the motor height. See how short that is or how much lower that is? versus this. Doesn't have any intrusions, everything clears, just brings the weight of the can down. And as everybody knows that has one of these, they, they roll over a lot more than what most videos show. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attempt to throw together a video of how I did it. It may not be the best way, it may not be the most efficient way, and. It, it just worked for me. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna get rid of blue and I'm gonna start taking some stuff off of red here and we'll get ready to go. So the first thing I'm gonna do is cut the factory zip ties to hold the motor wires in place. I'm gonna pull the motor off um, and then cut what needs to be cut under there. Don't want to bore you guys with, oh my God, everybody can do that part. But that's the way I'm going to do it. So grab the zip ties, get them out. And then I hate to mess with a fresh piece of equipment here. But the, the other truck runs really good with the motor drop down. So why not, right? Especially if this is the one I want to try doing competitions with. So there we go. Step one. Complete. Can is out of the way. Just a stock 45 turn. RC four wheel drive. Comes in the ready to run kit. So there, the motor and the screw is right away. A few different things I could do next. Um, I could simply just cut, get my Dremel out, cut this little wing off, which I guess is to mount the servo on the other side for whatever reason. Um, and then I can cut right here. I can do both of those without disassembling the motor mount. But what I'm gonna do off camera to help this go along a little bit is I'm gonna take the spur gear off here and then I'll come right back. All right, so what I try to do is, I'm gonna try to do is not take the steering and the servo apart. Um, there's other guys out there that have put the servo underneath to help bring the center of gravity down that much more. I haven't tried that yet. Um, and I don't think I'm gonna try it yet. No particular reason, just gonna do what I know so far. So, went back here with a, what did I use, a 10 mil? Let's use a regular Craftsman, sorry, seven mil wrench. Took the back nut off the spur gear. And the spur gear doesn't actually come off until you pull off the four the four, you have one, two, three, four screws that hold the, the front of the mounting plate on. So I'm going to get right back here. I'm going to pull these bad boys off. Four come off, three go on to pull this off. Um, we have to trim one. That's the third cut in doing this. 
to be able to clear the frame and I'll show you here in a second. Once I get this off, there we go. Four off. There's the uh, motor plate. Creature of habit, I just put all my screws back where they came from. There we go, set that out of the way. Now I can slide the spur gear and the little washer out. And without fail, I'll drop the washer. Oh, got it. There it is. Spur gear's off, washer's off. I have a little box back here I keep all the parts in, or lid, or whatever you want to call it. So now, what we have is, see if I can get you in there. We have access to the motor plate. All four spots. We have access to make this cut here alongside the servo, and we have access to cut this tab off. Um, these two are pretty quick and easy. This one here, um, I gotta take the three screws off to hold the second half of this plate in place. And I looked it over, and it looks like I can get you in there. It looks like I can take this off too without pulling the servo. So uh, that might take a little bit more finesse. I'll be right back. All right, there we go. So I'm down to one screw on the second half of the motor plate. Just three to hold it on there. Three to hold the spur gear on, three to hold the plate on. And just like that, it's off. Put the screw over here. Now, if you've never taken one of these apart before, um, this is where I think uh, the term clocking came from. So you can see all the different, almost like a clock, numbers on a clock. And there's as many spots on the transmission down here. And if you see right in here. So what I'm simply going to do, once I make my cuts in the metal, on the uh, frame and on the the motor mount is just like the term I said I'm gonna take it from where it was about right here you see it and I'm gonna move it down I'm gonna clock it and it'll end up being something like this down nice and low so that's out of the way now I'm gonna fire up, I mean gather up the tools I used, I used to cut the metal last time. Um, and that goes quite quickly. There is one part that is a pretty bit, it was the biggest pain to me. And that was this frame rail right here that goes from the ser one side of the servo to the other. When you cut this, you have to make two cuts in it. You have to cut it, I cut it at this hole the first last open hole before the servo and then you have to cut it again over here but you have to salvage the piece that goes into the frame rail because this fits um, the, the frame of the trail finder is notched out for this and the other side of this cross member is threaded so you got to take a shock tower off um, and you have to salvage that little piece unless you happen to have a little itty bitty square nut that fits in the frame um, I salvage the piece and I run over to my father-in-law's garage. He lives right down the road and I take his uh, belt sander and I sand it down as close and as thin as I can get it so that it just simply acts as a back nut to hold the shock tower on. So I'm going to gather up my Dremel, my cutoff wheel. We're going to make some sparks. All right, here's the patient. Here's the first two cuts. I'm using a standard uh, Dremel tool I've probably had for 15 years. The only drawback to this is it does not have variable speed. Uh, Rich from 2RC Productions did a whole review on a cheap variable speed one he picked up and he really liked it. But this is what I have, we're going to go with.
a little cut off wheel. I'm gonna try to do this one handed and hold the, the phone with the other. <laughs> Could get ugly. Here we go. Get this the best spot. And away we go. Nice and easy. Voila, there it is, cut number one. Probably gonna be hot. And then, as a matter of fact, I know it's hot because A, the cutoff wheel made it hot, but B, last time I did this, I don't know if you can see down there, but I melted through my foam. So I'm gonna set this uh, straight over on the plywood here, let it cool. I'm not worried so much about this little lip right here. I'm going to uh, touch that up off camera. Um, I know you guys get the point. This one, I'm not, this cut here, um, where am I? This cut here and here, not gonna be so easy with one hand, so give me just a minute. Okay, so, uh, put you guys down for a minute to make the cut right here alongside the servo and here's what the, the brace what's left of it it's still quite warm but I have to salvage this end to be able to hold the shock tower on also off camera I had to remove the shock tower if you're familiar with if you have a trail finder or something similar that back back screw needs something to go into and in my other truck, I simply, like I said, brought this over to the bandsaw and the belt sander, cut that off, and it went right back into its home. It wasn't too good for its home. I don't know if anybody will get that reference, but anyway. Um, one other thing I do with this is, or I'll do, is I have a tester's paint pen, a uh, thick black uh, enamel paint. And I will paint where I've cut here, here, and you see my boo-boo. Um, I was getting the edge off and it walked on me. So I'll touch these up. Um, this stuff doesn't take very long to dry, but this marker is also great for uh, detail work on like window frame, window trim, etc., door handles. So the next step of the video um, that'll be off camera will be me getting this thing in its rightful place. Um, actually, I take that back. I can do something else before I get to this. And that something else will be giving this bad boy a haircut. Give me just a minute. Before I do that, I guess I should explain. This is the tab you have to cut right here. The outermost top tab. So when you Get it in place you can swing it down this is the only one that hits you have to trim right about where my thumb if i had thumbnails that's where it would be but like right about there get rid of that and you have three three out of four left and searching around i've had seen people say unless you're using a stupid amount of torque the truck will be fine with just the three and i'm not using a stupid amount of torque so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take the screw out and give this a little haircut, but I need both hands. All right, 
I'm ready for some reassembly. I uh, put the shock hoop back up with just the one screw for now. I touched up the places I cut with my paint pen. And I got lucky tonight. That piece I told you I had to salvage for that the other side of the shock hoop right there. I didn't have to run over and use the bandsaw. I uh, was able to get a nice clean cut tonight with the uh, Dremel. Yeah, it's not the straightest, but it's only got to hold the shock tower and clear the motor. So I'm going to fit this baby back in there and uh, get the shock tower bolted back together and then I'll uh, come right back. All right. Try not to bore you with too much reassembly, but here's the trimmed motor mount, the back plate. See, now we're down to three. Cut the fourth one off. Throw a dab of paint on there. And I am now going to fit it in place and you'll see everything's black. Really hard to see, huh? Now I can swing it all the way down. Just like that. So I'm gonna grab my little dish here and see if I can't figure out where the screw holes are gonna line up for this one. <laughs> this may not be for everybody, may not be for anybody. I just happen to be watching a video that uh, gentleman Tom, who goes by uh, Madeline Lucas, I believe is what his handle is on, I know it is on Google Plus and, and YouTube. He made reference to this uh, modification and I've seen it five times on uh, Medic's channel, RC Sparks, where his, his buddy there, the young kid Dave, I think his name is, he they touched on it really quick at the end of a video that they were doing uh some crawling on a rock wall in the snow and at the very end of the video um after they say their goodbyes they cut right back to hey check out this mod david i think the kid's name is david but check out check out this mod he did and and david gets on and he goes yep i just crooked the motor so um between tom and dave mentioning it I thought, well, that looks fun. So I tried it. And it was fun. It was very fun. I like tinkering. This one actually can probably stand to come down. Yeah, I know right now you're staring at my wrist and just watching me put screws in. What fun. Um, give me just a second. And I will drop it, of course. Um, one thing I keep handy, this little magnet, just for stuff like this. Oh, it fell down too far. Magnet does me no good that way. Put it back. Tried to do this in as many little parts as I could. Only people don't get bored. You know, look squirrel. So there, I'm gonna be taking some of this back apart anyway because like I had mentioned, I got the shock, the taller shock hoops um, and I gotta get some taller shocks. But for now, um, it will suffice. I'm getting ahead of myself, I'm wanting to put the motor back on. So I got the plate back on, the backing plate. Now, we've got these three screws here for the uh, motor plate that I probably should have put together first now that I think about it. Um, I even forgot how they went. They go like this. Because the motor is going to go there. So, yep, give me a minute and I'll fix that. Okay, so I made a mistake. Didn't cut too much off just didn't cut enough um i was putting the motor plate back together trying to get it adjusted and in place real quick so i could come back to the camera and i realized i forgot to cut something 
So when I cut the three, oh, you're over here. When I cut the fourth mount off, you also have to trim ever so slightly right alongside this this hole right here that the, the old post used to go through. Just trim that right off, right about it like that, and it will give you the clearance you need. So I'm gonna jump off camera yet again. And uh, God, I hope this edits together well, guys. I'm sorry if it doesn't. Uh, I'm gonna trim that off and come right back. And I'm back. Good morning, everybody. There it is. I made my cut right here. Hit it with the enamel paint. And just like everything I paint, I touch it way too soon. It's all right. I will uh, adjust later. See now, bring you in a little closer. Now we can, we can put the motor under if we wanted to. Put this back down. Not really sure how low one could go with the motor. I haven't tried anything other than the setting that I used. Um, try moving this. I don't know if you guys can hear a combination of the slight radio I have playing in the background and the local tree frog that has come back. He uh, he loves to hang out here. Can't get rid of them. I've moved them to the woods down the road. And I swear it's the same one that comes back only to laugh at me. Uh, whatever. I don't live in the, in the country. So it's kind of a woodsy sound, I guess. Now these long integer um, hex drivers work out pretty good if you're like me and you try to remove as few items as possible when you make modifications. I'm not a, I'm not a fan of uh, really ripping apart if I don't have to. It's a little different with this truck though because I built the other one from the ground up so I'm not afraid to tear into it. If you've never done one of these or if you didn't build your trail finder and you're a little nervous about you know, hey, uh, what's that like when I take that off? Or what's going to happen when I do this? I tell you what, just do it. You'll be able to get it back together. And there's a million videos online of how to take these apart and modify them and rebuild them. And each one of these trail finders comes with a pretty good um, user's manual. So... I believe this ready to run came with a better assembly manual than my kit came with. I was comparing the two because there were some, uh, what do you call that, addendums in my kit. They made changes. So, oh, don't do this. Uh, use that piece of paper that came with it and do what that says. And that had to do a lot with the uh, grub screws and the drive shafts and the... Uh, I think in my case it was the way the yeah it'll come to me the way the sh uh, leaf springs went on the axles um, I guess back in the day they used or in the early versions they used to two bolts or, or yeah two little bolts up top two little bolts on the bottom and that's how everything was held together on the leaf spring well now they use the one the two long screws that go all the way through for each um, leaf spring. So it took me, you know, of course, when I first opened it, I went, oh, I don't need this. Well, I had to refer back to it pretty quick. So motor mount is in. Motor mount is low. Nice and low. The next step, uh, if I remember right, is the... Uh, Getting the spur gear back in and dag nab it if I don't have to pull that back apart to do it. Got carried away here yapping. So, if I was a fancy editor, I would just edit it all out and or speed it up. But I'm not, so I'll do this. Okay, I'm back. 
I, uh, while I was off camera, I realized there was a reason I had the servo out of my other truck. And that's because you can't get the motor to the motor mount without pulling off this cross brace. This guy right here. It's no big deal. Screw on either edge of the frame and the two screws that hold the servo down. Had to pop this out to be able to steer the motor into its new home. So what I'm going to do now is pop it back in its place and tighten them down. Now this motor fits a little different than the motor I have in my other truck because there's not as many places to, you can't turn the motor itself. There's only two holes on this motor. Um, the motor I have in my other truck, offhand I forgot what it is. There's I think four or five, four or six holes for being able to move the motor around. But that's all right, I'll make do. Um, just a matter of getting this thing back in place so I can put the truck back together. I gotta go this way with it. There we go. I did learn while I had this thing apart for this that uh, from the factory, from RC four wheel drive, a lot of stuff not tight. Um, the shock hoops were not tight. The uh, some of the screws back here were not tight. So I've kind of, and I'll go through it some more and make sure things are tight as I finish this. But I think I had mentioned I'm going to have this apart again soon because of some upgrades and some tweaks I want to do to different parts of the truck. I have uh, shooter shackles to add. I have the RC four wheel drive pun punisher shafts because the out of the box plastic ones here will last you about 15 seconds and then pop. So that's uh, probably the most disgusting part of this truck is that RC four wheel drive put something so flimsy on it after you pay through the nose for the kit or the truck. They use these tiny itty bitty plastic drive shafts that I have another video on my YouTube channel. It's a real short one. Um, it shows my blue truck about, I don't know, 30, 40 seconds in you see something fly out the side and it's the drive shaft. But there we have it. Um, aside from putting the motor wires back in place and um, you know, zip tying things or twist tying things down, um, there's the motor drop. You see it, everything clears. Um, and in the front here, everything clears. This is real close. Um, what I did on my other truck is I took the servo horn screw and I put a longer one and a spacer in to bring it down just a little bit. But this will work just the way it is. Um, but it's bone stock, these babies don't have a whole lot of suspension anyway. So I would say add that um, screw to the servo horn, longer screw and a little bit of a spacer and bring this down just a tick. Um, this has got the stock plastic servo horn on it, so that's not going to stay very long either. I uh, have to get a good metal one, which I haven't done on my other truck yet either. But there's the difference in how the motor sits. It was up here, now it's down there. So that should help the center of gravity out a lot. Um, I'm no master with editing. I'm going to do my best to put all these bits together. Um, I hope this is helpful to somebody. Um, I know one of my videos, I think it's been seen 800 times and it surprised me. I'm hoping people are watching it and learning something or watching it and it's helping them figure some things out. So that's it. Um, I now have both my trail finders with their motors dropped. Um, set them up side by side here. There's one. Two and I don't know if you can see them. 
This one sits super low, as does this one. I hope it's, uh, like I said, I hope it's been a help for somebody. I just decided one night to wing it, see how it went. Worst case scenario, I'm on eBay or wherever buying the parts that I cut and putting it back the way it was. Most of these little things are pretty cheap. So that is it. That is all for now. Um, there'll be some more videos coming with this truck pretty soon with the installation of the shock hoops, the drive shafts, shooter shackles. Um, I got the scale-worn hubs front and rear for it and a couple of other goodies. Um, so stay tuned. Thanks again for watching. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, like it, rate, subscribe, comment. No particular order. Thank you for your time.